Okay, I'm back here again. All right, we've been playing around with creating users and user IDs. In the preceding user add video, we added a user, no home directories and so forth. We've added a user before, okay, and we have had create home directories. So for example, let's take a look at where we are again here. If I type in get int, oops, I'm not inside my system. All right, if I type in get int, P A S S W D and I press enter again here. You'll notice there I had deleted the user that we created called demo with the home directory and it was all gone. So the, the person or the account demo doesn't exist. Let me type in clear. Now, let's see what happened to their directory. Remember, I just did a user DEL to kill that user's account. All right. So I go LS dash L. I now have a folder here that was called 101 and it was for the user called demo. So basically what I did is I created a user account called demo. I created the directory. I made the directory, gave the person a common name and then, or, or, or a comment name. And then I deleted the account. And let's say by deleting the account, I made a mistake yet. The home folder and everything is still there here. The only difference is, is they took the name demo out and they replaced it with the person's number here, or the, the user's number, 101 here. So let's say I made a mistake. So let's do this. If I want to type in user add again, okay? Now, because I still have it in my system here, but I could do this, user add dash. Now, I want to have the user demo get recreated, but I want to force that user to come back to use that number 101, all right? So that person, I don't have to recreate the directory, he's just taking that account and he's becoming that user which would then have permissions to access this folder. So I have to add a command in here called dash u, all right? The dash u is user ID and I type in the number that I want the user to have, 101 in this situation. Okay, remember, Bill was 100, 101 was the second one created. I deleted that account by accident. I want to put it back into here. So if I created a new account, it will go to 102, which means it's a completely different account. All right, but now I want it to put it back to give it to the same account. Now there's a whole bunch of security issues and there's a whole bunch of discussion that pertains to it. But for right now, I just want to say, hey, I created the account. I want just to have that number. Okay, there's a lot of discussions people will have otherwise. I want to go slash, oops, I want to go dash D. I'm going to go create it and export, which is where the default for Solaris is in a folder called home slash DEMO. Again, I got to type in everything the way it was before, capital D, and you'll notice capital DEMO, capital DEMO right here. Okay, great. Okay, now the folder is already created there. Right, so do I have to make this? Let me put that in anyways. Let's see what happens. Okay, and I'm going to put in a common name because I'm creating the user account. The M, by the way, ties the user to this folder again. It's all part and parcel of the creation system. But anyways, I got the dash M to make the account. The comment that I want to put in here is again in quotations, capital D E M O. All right. And then I'm just going to use the, the name called demo again. All right. Now, so if I press enter, it seems like everything has happened. Let's look at what happened though. Right now, I'm not going to type in get ent or display user ID, but I want to see this. If I'm, I'm in home and I want to see what happened to the folders names here. I want to see this. So if I type in ls dash l, press enter, you'll see that now it took that user before the number 101, the folder that was created 101, demo, and it put demo and it created this new user called demo to this. All right, let me clear the screen. What happens is if I go get ant password or pass WD, oops, space mistake, P-A-S-S-W-D, and I press enter, you will notice at the bottom of the list, Demo was, the account was recreated, or an account was created called Demo. It was given the number 101. There's the, the group number 10, which is basically staff. But 
demo, there is the common name or the comment name, I should say, not common name, but common name, comment name, slash export home demo. All right. So the demo account was created and I sort of got him back because I deleted him by accident here. All right. Now, in this situation, there weren't a lot of files. There weren't a lot of folders. As a matter of fact, there was nothing inside the home directory. So I really didn't have to worry too much about permissions and so forth. Had there been folders and files, then I would have to go into there and start checking these folders and changing the permissions. But for all intents and purposes right now, I've got a new user account here. There is something that we haven't done. Let me type in CEL arc. So I clear again. One of the things that we've done is we create a demo, but we've never given demo a password. All right. So can I give, how do I give the person a password? Well, let's try this. If I type in P-A-S-S-W-0-R-D and I type in capital D-E-M-O, password command not found. So it didn't like that word. What if I try this? S-S-W-D. Okay, demo, press enter. Now, it didn't like the full word password, but it liked the, the pass WD. And it says, what is the new password for the account called demo? All right, so I'm just going to create a fictitious P at SSW0RD, right? No great imagination there. For test purposes, this is okay. Don't use that for the real world. Re-enter it. P at SSW0RD. Password successfully changed for a demo. Okay, so let's do this. Let's try something. Exit. I'm at Bill. If I type in log out, I've logged out of Bill. I'm at the Solaris console. Let's try to see if demo logs in. P at SSW0RD. And lo and behold, there's the user account demo using the word password, which is what I created here. Let's see where he is or she is. They're in the home folder of demo here. Okay. LS L. Do a long listing. See if there's anything in there. Oh, look at this. What we have is related files that deal with the demo account. So when I typed in the dash M to make the directory in the path, it took anything that the system was supposed to give it and it automatically created whatever it needed for that user. So for all intents and purposes, demo is now an active account. Let's clear the screen. Let's try something else. Okay, let's try going SU root. Let's see if demo can change into root. Roots can only be assumed by authorized users. Well, the only user in Bill's system is Bill, who has access to the root. Demo, a generic user, can't get into root role unless I give him the root role. Let's try something else. Let's try display UID. But Demo can get a list of all the accounts in here which opens up a lot of discussions for a lot of security experts. That comes down to the idea of if anybody can get into your system by simple commands, they can find out whatever they need to about the system. Let me clear the screen. Let's type this in. Get int, pass WD, press enter. Whoa, generic user can still get a lot of information, right? They can't get the person's password or anything else here, but enough enough information that if they did want to do some malicious stuff on the system or try some hacking or brute force hacking or so forth, they can be able to try to do that in your system. All right? These are tools that are readily available to the hacker who knows about it. All right? You as the administrator have to be very careful and conscious of what happens here. Nevertheless, it's just a point to keep in mind when you're dealing with security. So... To recap, what we did is we created a user in the last three videos that said user add, put a name in, didn't really create the user, just took up a space. Then I created a user and with a home directory and made that home directory, created the user, but then I deleted the user account by accident, but the home directory was still there. So what I then did is then I just added in 
um, went back, recreated the user, forced them to go back to the user ID 101, and basically I'm back in business again.